Tucker Kinra. In this short video, we are continuing to work through our checklist to make sure we stay on track for our treatment. We are treating tooth number eight. So far, we have diagnosed, anesthetized, and isolated the tooth. We are now ready to begin endodontic access. In our first segment, we covered the first four check marks. In this segment, we're going to go over the next five. Let's take on the first two of the highlighted segments, which are conservative access and locating the canal. Now that we have the rubber dam in place, it's time to perform a conservative access preparation. I always start with a lexicon endo access burr. This burr allows for ease of penetration into the pulp chamber. I enlarge the access with the endo Z burr shown here. I like this burr since it's non end cutting and has a slight taper. This will result in ideal cavity prep when finished. At this time, I locate the canals with the DG16 endodontic explorer. Up until now, I have penetrated and enlarged the pulp chamber, but in many cases, I have to remove the cervical bulges or triangles of dentin to obtain straight line access. This is known as the refinement portion of the endodontic access. After locating the canals, my objective is to get to working length as efficiently as possible. Once I have confirmed working length with a 10 or 15 hand file, I initially pre-enlarge the canal with the path files numbers 1, 2, and 3, and then enlarge the orifice with an orifice opener such as a ProTaper SX file. By this time, I've created straight line access, and I can confirm this by looking at my file's position in the tooth. This reference point gives me a reproducible position to reconfirm working length with an apex locator. Once we have confirmation with the apex locator, we can then proceed to our final shaping with a filing technique of choice. There are many choices of files and techniques available. For this case, I decided to use the Wave 1 file because of its simplicity. Due to the size of the canal, the large Wave 1 file was used, which can be seen here with a black stripe. This file has a tip size of 40 with a progressive taper. The Wave 1 reciprocates instead of rotates, and this unique motion allows for faster propagation to the apex. In this case, I allowed the file to run in three millimeter increments while irrigating and recapitulating between segments. When I reached my working length, I stopped and re-irrigated. To make sure I have the proper apical stop and canal shape, I use a shape verifier. This allows me to determine what carrier size I will use for obturation. I reconfirmed this with a radiograph. When I take my check film here, it can be seen that the lesion extended even more initially than is suspected. Therefore, irrigation will be crucial to the success of this case. As you can see, once you get to working length, the final shaping is a breeze.